इन्वायरमेंटल साइंस सब्जेक्ट को ट्रिपल थ्री मॉड्यूल फाइव लेसन एटीन वाटर एंड एनर्जी कंजर्वेशन हेलो लर्नर्स वेलकम इट टू आवर सीनियर सेकेंडरी इन्वायरमेंटल साइंस कोर्स ऑफ एन आई ओ एस आई एम नीलम गुप्ता कोर्स कॉर्डिनेटर ऑफ इन्वायरमेंटल साइंस वेलकम यू इन दिस प्रोग्राम ऑफ एन आई ओ एस इन आवर प्रीवियस प्रोग्राम वी हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस डेट वाटर एंड एनर्जी आर रिक्वायर्ड फॉर सर्वाइवल ऑफ ऑल ऑर्गेनिजम्स एंड देर इज ग्रोइंग शॉर्टेज ऑफ वाटर एंड एनर्जी which limits growth and growth and development human beings through over exploitation of these resources have made these scarce pollution of natural water bodies such as sea river lake etc have made their water unusable the problem of growing shortage of two essential resources namely water energy can be solved only through their wise use and effective conservation Water conservation encompasses the policies and activities made to manage fresh water as a sustainable resource and to meet current and future human demand for detailed discussion of water and energy conservation we have with us mrs shivani goswami retired ajuti from mothers international school new delhi she has long association with nios she will discuss this lesson in detail hello learners Today we are going to discuss conservation of energy and water, two very essential natural resources for the very survival of not only human beings but the all the life forms on this planet Earth. But a few lines before we begin. There is no doubt that humanity has made tremendous progress in leaps and bounds, especially so in last hundred and fifty years of our history. But at what cost? we have plundered our natural resources we have over exploited them as a result the water that we drink today is polluted the air we breathe is poisonous and the threat of global warming is looming large on us and it is a reality not a fiction now with that scenario we begin our lesson today water and energy conservation Today's lesson the objectives would be factors responsible for increasing water demand and various methods for conservation of water management of water resources national river conservation plans then use of energy by society and various conventional and non conventional sources of energy improving energy efficiency in home place of work transport industry etc and various energy conservation programs in the country Let's take up water conservation first. Water is an indispensable natural resource we all know. It is also a renewable and reusable resource. Scientists estimate that nearly 3/4 of earth is covered with water. However, only 1% of this water is fresh and is usable for living organisms including humans. Through water cycle throughout the year everywhere it is being in overused and some of it is even wasted hence water conservation has become very necessary this is a water cycle depicted on your screen we will be talking about this in greater details in all the uh, following slides according to un estimate by 2025 almost 2/3 of the world will face shortage of potable that is drinking water therefore we have to devise methods of conserving water water cycle also known as hydrological cycle is the journey of water that it takes as it circulates from land to sky and back again sun's heat provides energy to evaporate water from the earth's surface plants also lose water to the air as a result of transpiration so evaporation and transpiration are the two processes through which water reaches air and there are two processes that will bring down this air, uh, water down that we will be coming a little later factors responsible for increasing water demand are rising demand due to growing population expansion of irrigation increasing the demand by industry and increasing water use due to changing lifestyles let's take each of them one by one rising demand due to growing population population of india has increased three times since independence due to this the demand for water has also increased we need water for drinking flushing or our uh, waste 
and for domestic use as well as for irrigation and industries. Second, expansion of irrigation. India is an agro agricultural country, hence plenty of water is needed for irrigation. Around 80 to 90 percent of the total water is used for irrigation and the remaining is used for domestic, industrial and other purposes. There has been a rapid increase in the irrigated area of in India since independence. These are the reasons for increasing demand of irrigation, uncertainty of rainy season, changing cropping pattern, growing demand for, of water for commercial crops and regional and seasonal variation in distribution of rainfall. This shows the rice field on the right of the screen. Rice, as you, as you must be knowing, that in its early phases of growth requires water, a lot of water. But we can reduce the amount of water required in our agricultural field. For example, few pressure sprinklers that allows 80% of water to reach the crops and micro irrigation which delivers small amounts of water pre uh, precise to the crop and these are available. However, many of the world's poor farmers cannot afford most of the modern technology methods and therefore they revert back to low cost traditional technologies. Next is industrial use of water. The picture on the screen shows the split up of the total amount of water between the different aspects of commercial uses. Water is used in many industries, be it agro-based industry or mineral-based industries. Water is needed in large amounts during the production process or as heat exchanger for cooling various machines and instruments that get heated up as a, process, as a result. In power plants too, water is used as power source as well as for cooling agent. The, co the core and oil refinery industries use water in various chemical processes. The changing lifestyle. The life style of people has changed large number of attractive appliances, gadgets and fi uh, fittings are available. Taps and showers are designed in such a way that large amount of water comes out when we are, they are turned on. Washing machine and dishwasher also use large amounts of water. Lot of water is used for recreational purposes like water parks. Most of the sports or games require huge quantities of water. Water in the reservoir are used for recreational purposes such as boating, swimming, etc. Even golf courses which are maintained well require tremendous amount of water for their maintenance. Need for conserving water. We receive the second highest rainfall in the world, first being the Brazil, but much less water infiltrates the soil or is re-entered into our water table. A sizable amount of water is drained as runoff, move, that is moving out from the soil surface and draining into the sea. The map shows the water stress in different parts of our country. The red parts are the ones which are in the stress, that is they have much less amount of water than they require and yellow and orange show comparatively less amount of stress, that is our northeast areas. In the high stress zones are our states like Gujarat, Rajasthan, etc. Observe the state situations in this picture carefully. Methods of conserving water. Recharging of groundwater, reforestation, recycling of water, reuse of wastewater and water harvesting. Let us take each of them one by one. Reforestation. There is a continuous in interchange of moisture between earth and atmosphere constituting water cycle. The movement of water through the hydrological cycle has a major influence on rainwater distribution. Plants play an important role in this cycle through the process of transpiration. Thus, forests play a very important role in maintaining water balance of the soil and the atmosphere. Forests play a protective function too and they conserve soil and water. Forests provide major ecological services like support energy flow, chemical cycling, reduce soil erosion and absorb and release water 
they also purify water and air. They influence local and regional climate. They store atmospheric carbon. Cutting down of forest reduces the ecological service provided by the forest and it can lead to regional and global climate change. Reforestation is the process of planting of trees on deforested areas or increased tree cover from the regrowth and planting of trees that is called as plantation. Reforestation increases soil fertility by preventing soil erosion, prevents runoff of eroded soil into aquatic system and thereby preventing flooding. Thus, reforestation plays a major role in conservation of water. The diagram on your screen shows two picture scenarios. On the left is a reforested area and on the right there is a comparison between the same field. In 2008, it was a barren land and after a few years after replantation, you have the picture on your screen that was taken in 2014. Next is recycling of water. The wastewater from industrial or domestic sources can be used after proper treatment for irrigation, recharging the groundwater and even for industrial and municipal use. Agricultural lands close to cities can be irrigated with municipal wastewater. Household level recycled grey water can be put to various uses to reduce pure water requirement. Pure water after use in bath and shower can also be used for watering the plants. This is a picture, rather schematic diagram showing the use of grey water. Waste water reuse or recycling always uh, reuse the grey water. The grey water for flushing toilets or watering plant garden. Grey water is all waste water generated in household or office buildings from streams without fecal contamination that is streams except for the waste water from toilets. Sources of grey water include showers, baths, washing machine and dishwasher. Reuse of waste water. Waste water containing lots of nutrients and these nutrients may help in the growth of plants when such water is used in irrigation. Reuse of Waste water occurs most effectively with on-site or small treatment systems. This is a pictorial depiction of rainwater uh, water harvesting. It is showing how the rainwater falls on the rooftop and that is getting collected in a tank under the ground and after required treatment, it can be used for various purposes. Water harvesting is collecting the rainwater that falls on the house roof to uh, rooftops and buildings and putting it to use later on or simply replenishing the groundwater by allowing the water to reach underground. The ancient methods of water management including capturing of water from swollen streams and rivers during monsoon season and storing it in various forms of water bodies can also be done. Recharging of groundwater. The available groundwater is about 13 to 20 times more than the water available on the surface. The groundwater consists of water contained in the soil or aquifers that is the underground natural water reservoir. Flood water may be injected into the aquifers through series of deep pits or ditches. Small reservoirs and percolation tanks to be dug to hold the run runoff water recharging the groundwater or the storm water, used water that is a municipal and domestic uh, wastewater can be fed into pits, trenches, depressions to be filtered and percolated through the soil for recharging the groundwater. Distillation of desiltation of canals and tanks should be done regularly that also allows faster percolation and pre-monsoon tillage of the crop fields help in conserving soil moisture. Groundwater recharge or deep drainage or deep percolation is a hydrological process where water moves downward from the surface to the groundwater. On the right side of your screen are the two ways which normally are used for recharging our groundwater. One is a large pit that is dug and the other one is in the residential areas, the 
pits are sunk, uh, created so that the water drains off through it to the underground levels. Recharge is the primary method through which water enters an aquifer. The process usually occurs in the zone below the plant roots and often expressed as a flux to the water table surface. Recharge occurs both naturally, that is through the water cycle, and through the processes, that is artificial groundwater recharge, where rainwater and or other reclaimed water is rooted to the subsurface. Management of water conservation. The effective management and conservation of water has to incorporate the following two strategies. One, reduction in loss and wastage of water, and second, Removal of pollutants to transform polluted water into utilizable form. One, reduction in wastage of water can be best achieved by launching awareness campaigns through TV, radio, newspaper, etc. Other ways would be organizing short plays, street plays or lectures. This is for bringing about awareness. Any agency, either government or otherwise, responsible for water meters and charging for water use should make it a point to install efficient water meters and decide to charge a rate which will force the public to reduce use of municipal water. Environmental protection agencies estimated that metering alone can reduce consumption by 20 to 40 percent. Taps, showers, floor restrictors, uh, and low volume toilet flushes can also help in this aspect. Raw water flushing where toilets use sea water or non-purified water. Any leak in water pipes and faucets should be detected and repaired immediately. Lawns and gardens should be watered in early morning or late evening to prevent excessive transpiration and water loss. Rainwater is a major source of water for irrigation of agricultural fields in the country and also for recharging the groundwater. Rainfall is restricted to three months in a year. Therefore, rainwater should be stored and use of groundwater should be well planned as groundwater is a renewable water source and gets replenished by natural processes of recharge. The diagram shows groundwater recharging and on the right you have a deep pipe fitted so that the runoff water can be pushed to the subsoil area to recharge the groundwater. Next is removal of pollutants to transform the polluted water into utilizable form. Proper treatment of domestic and municipal wastewater which is rich in organic matter and pathogens also help to conserve water, tremendous uh, water. Treatment ensures the removal of pollution, germs, toxic elements. Aquatic plants like water hyacinth, etc., also help towards this aspect. They absorb pollutants like phosphates and thereby making the water use, usable. These aquatic plants can be harvested later for producing biogas. National River Conservation Plants. There are several Rivers in India such as Ganga, Yamuna, Brahmaputra, Krishna, Kaveri, Narmada, Godavari, we are all familiar with these names. Many of the Indian rivers are polluted and their water over large stretches are unfit for human use. River pollution is mostly from discharge of effluents by the industries or cities developed along the river course and from bathing, washing clothes and throwing garbage into it. To clean up the rivers, massive action plans have been launched. We will be discussing two, Ganga Action Plan and Yamuna Action Plan. Ganga Action Plan. Ganga is the largest Indian river running for about 2522 kilometers area. The major cause of Ganga water pollution is unrestricted discharge of untreated sewage and industrial effluents all along its course. Ganga Action Plan is an ambitious and first of its kind river cleaning project. It was launched in on 14th January 1986 to improve the water quality by diversion and treatment of domestic sewage. The other objectives of Ganga Action Plan are control of pollution from agricultural runoff, human defecation, cattle wallowing and throwing off 
unburnt or half burnt bodies into the river, research and development to conserve biotic and diversity of the river and development of new technology of sewage treatment. Yamuna Action Plan was also implemented in 1993. It is a bilateral project between Government of India and Japan for taking up the cleaning process of River Yamuna. Yamuna runs for about 1336 kilometers across several northern Indian states. Action Plan aims at cleaning the, and conserve the water of River Yamuna by removing pollutants from it. Under the Yamuna Action Plan, the most critical stretches of Yamuna have been taken up for cleaning up and it is also this particular action plan is primarily looking at the pollution around Delhi stretches where city dumps most of its total sewage. Thank you friends. I hope you have enjoyed today's lesson and learned a few tips to conserve energy. Thank you Shivani ma'am for sharing information related to water and energy conservation. Before we wrap up, we would like to recap the main points that is what you have learnt. Water is an indispensable natural source. Sources of usable water are rivers, lakes, ponds, tanks and ground water. Several factors responsible for water scarcity are increased demand of an increasing population, increasing demand by expansion of irrigation and its demand, increasing water use to changing in lifestyle, silting of rivers, bad management of water resources. Since water is needed for domestic purposes in industries, irrigation and rearing livestock, its conservation is absolutely necessary. Water may be conserved by proper management of water resources. This can be in four direction. Reducing water wastage is best reduced by generating public awareness through the media, enforcement by the government and by individual efforts. Water harvesting is through collection of rainwater, regular desiltation of canals and ponds, injecting flood waters into aquifers. Another way of obtaining usable water is by removing pollutant from freshwater bodies. Our rivers Ganges, Ganga and Jamuna has been polluted are and are being cleaned through the river action plants. Dear learners, this is all about lesson 18, water and energy conservation. We will come again to meet you with a new program of environmental science. Thank you.